I hear you. Oh my goodness. How do I get my screen? Oh, there we go. You figured it out. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, good to see you. Thanks again for doing this. Of course. <laughs> it's, it, it is such a weird transition uh, to, compared to like a late night show where you get announced. This, you just kind of pop in and now you're here. There's no well, wrap up. I've never done a late night show, so this is all good for me. It doesn't that has to be by that has to be by choice. That has to be by choice, Justine, right? Like they That's offer it to you. Very flattering. <laughs> very flattering and a little misguided. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to let you know, there's folks watching on uh, YouTube and on LonelyJukebox.com. So um, I just want, this is not like a pre-recorded thing. I'm going to edit later. So I'm just you know, doing my due diligence and letting you know. So. Great. <laughs> Not that you've done anything embarrassing. I just feel obligated to tell you. You're the first guest of the night, and I just want to kind of let you know. <laughs> Great. Awesome. <laughs> um, and uh, since you said you haven't been on a late night show, I'm tempted to move this back like four hours and then have you back another time so we can count it as like your, your debut. Okay. All right. That's fine with me. Or you could just replay it in like a few hours. <laughs> I absolutely will. I mean, since uh, they're all pre-recorded, you know, <laughs> right now. That's true. I can do whatever I want. And, and and a phrase I hear a lot now from everybody is just, well, I have the time. So yeah. you do. Everyone does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those watching at home, this is Justine Loop. Uh, she's an actress. Uh, many of my friends, uh, I don't know if you like being told how people, what they know you from, or it's disconcerting. I don't know. But a lot of them, a lot of them have said that Willa is their favorite character on Succession. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's, that's really flattering considering that there's so many awesome characters on that show. I feel like it's like a buffet of wild people. So Yeah. Um, and a lot of the scenes literally take place at like buffets in a mansion as well. Oh, no, the amount of buffets. And I'm not one of those actors that doesn't eat during the, <laughs> during the buffets. Luckily, though, they're the real deal. They have, like, the best food in those buffets. They really do, like, pimp out all the sets. Like, the props are pretty realistic. So I've had a good, a good, so, many so exciting. delicious meals on set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled to hear it's not plastic grapes uh, or they take it away from you before they he gets to actually eat it. No, no, it's so good. In fact, when we were, we were the first season we filmed in Wales at the end and they had this like incredible caterer do all of the prop food. And I remember being warned like several times by the director that I, they were like, the amount you're eating in every take, you're, going, you're not going to be okay by the time this is done. <laughs> Trust me, I have a very large stomach. I'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, and you got to eat now because you may go to another show you're working on and there may be no food. It's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, I realized, I, I explained to you what this Lonely Jukebox is yesterday. And as I was explaining it to you, right before I said it, I said, you know, it's really simple. It's just this. And then halfway through the sentence, I was like, this is a very convoluted concept. So I'm going to explain it again to you and just to folks who are watching as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, those who use smartphones uh, in certain ways know that in bars, there's an app on your phone. One is called TouchTunes, not a sponsor yet, um, but they um, uh, they let you play music on a jukebox in a bar while you're still sitting in your seat. Um, so you don't have to walk across the bar in front of all those people. So they don't know that you chose a specific song maybe, um, but maybe you're embarrassed by it or you're just lazy. Um, and uh, now you can check for bars within a 10, a ten mile a ten mile radius on that app and um, to try to figure out which bar that you're in. Um, so after everything closed for COVID nineteen, I checked that app late one night, and um, there was all the all the jukeboxes had gone dark, meaning they were unplugged or the power's out, which makes sense. Why would you run that during a when the bar is closed? Except for one, the airport pub and package in my hometown uh, in Northwest New Jersey. Um, in rural, nor rural Northwest New Jersey. So I played a song on there just to see if, it, if this was a dream or if it was real, and it was real. So then uh, a week later, I decided that I would put it out there that anybody who wants me to play a song on this jukebox inside this closed bar can do so. You just got to send me the dollar twenty to pay for the song. And then to make it worth their while, I also give $2 uh, uh, to directly to uh, servers and bartenders and kitchen staff who have lost work. And it's all through Venmo? It's primarily, 
Venmo is a great way to do it. Yeah, if you have Venmo, that's the simplest, easy way to do it. But um, I know not everyone does. So if you happen to have the Cash App or Zelle, um, or if you're my dad, uh, he gave me a, a crisp $20 bill today. So. What's your Venmo again? Uh, yeah, it's just um, my first name and my last name with a dash in the middle, Curtis Dash Ray. And um, that's R-A-Y-E. Um, for those watching on YouTube, I put it down in the description of YouTube. And um, if you're watching on the website, lonelyjukebox.com, I put it above the video and below the video. So I don't want anybody missing out uh, on where to send me uh, the money. Uh, this is exciting. You're the, you, if you're looking me up now, that's exciting. You're the first guest to do it during the uh I Let's am, go. but I'm not, I'm not finding you, dude. <laughs> oh, no. C-U-R-T-I-S dash R-A-Y-E. C-U-R-T-I-S dash R-A-Y-E. Let's try it again. Enter. Ah, here you are. Yeah. All right. um, cool. This is a, yeah, this is a step up. A couple other guests, after they left, they kind of like, threw some money my way and declared a song on the way out, which was this is you? Cool. Yeah, that's me. I'm a okay. bigger than that one. I apologize for it. Four digits of it, your phone. It says that I need that. I will give it to you. Uh, it's weird. Some people have, it asks that for some people, some people it doesn't. Um, the first time when I did this last week with Cecily Strong, she asked and I thought she was scamming me. I was sure I was being scammed by Cecily Strong. Oh, she um, asked it too. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> 2998. 2998. All right, now now everyone has to just guess the first digit. <laughs> I get a hold of you. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, thank you. That's, that's that's very generous, and that entitles you. At least by the end, you can pick a song. But maybe I'll just pick a song to that's from the. I have a list uh, to work off right here right now. And um, Who knows this song. <laughs> yeah, do, do you have any um, particular genre? You're not that I'm going to pick your favorite genre, but what are you into music at all? I am. I'm. I like. I like a lot of different kinds of music. I love uh, folk. I love pop. I love uh, R and B. I love rap. I'm well, pretty is, versatile in terms this, of my taste. Well, this is great um, for a couple reasons. One, uh, ironically, I'm. I know very little about like popular music. Uh, I. I enjoy bluegrass music and uh, I'm like Benny Goodman and like 1930s big band. But any, when I was in school, like I, I never kept up with any of that. And I, and I still don't. Um, so you can help me out. In particular, uh, I got a Venmo from a gentleman named Chris. And he just wrote, you're not going to, he wrote any rap song is what he wrote. Um, okay, what about an Anderson Pack? Does that count as rap? You're asking the right guy as the authority on rap. What did you, Anderson, who? Anderson? Anderson Pack? Oh, oh, yeah, there he is. You're in um, for He's got a period right in the middle of his name. He's the uh, best. All right. Yeah, he's definitely here on the jukebox. Um, you want to hear like 30 seconds of Anderson, an Anderson Pack song? Yeah, which one? Boy, oh, boy. Um, the most popular one is from a Trolls movie, Don't Slack. Um, let's go for a deep cut, though. Um, I'm going to pick the eighth, ninth, or tenth most popular song. They're all explicit. Let's see. Tint, oh, Bloody Water, or Suede? I would go... Hmm. You pick. <laughs> I'm fine with any of those. Okay. I'm going to pick Bloody Water because I, I hope it's about sharks. So let's find out. <laughs> Let's find out. Um, there we go. My favorite would be Come Down. Oh. Just, just for your listeners. <laughs> Thank you for preserving your uh, your credibility. <laughs> um, let me look that up. And In fact, I'm, my, my boyfriend and I are trying to learn a choreography, a choreographed dance from it right now. Uh, do you, um, are you, do you want to perform that for everybody um, no. tonight? No, one day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We're very early on. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna, uh, I don't think you can hear it through my computer, so I'm gonna, um, 
blast it over to uh, this speaker over here. Okay. okay. Here we go. song and that will get you hooked and then you'll want to go in and, and listen to the rest okay i will um i will use your donation later on and play your favorite song into the airport pub and nobody will hear it and it'll be wonderful sounds good <laughs> um i did like that he rhymed water with lawless i res i respect that yeah he's fuck he doesn't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> no not at all <laughs> um have you seen this gentleman in person Anderson? No. no. Mm -mm. I actually haven't been to that many live concerts. Why is that now? Are you um, are you uh, uh, scared of um, uh, will call windows or what's what's that about? No, I'm just a homebody. I'm just oh. I'm really like I'm I don't go out much. Uh, in fact, when you asked me what my favorite dive bar is, I had to like go back to high school. I'm not. Yeah. A, yes. <laughs> to like to like fake IDs high school time because I just don't go out very much at all um and that's my answer to that <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you comfortable saying where this high school was yeah I, I'm from Denver Colorado got it um yeah. and um I, I never had a fake ID um my so brother made them she she made them my my brother made them Your brother while yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, what what makes a person good at fake IDs? Is it just having a lot of no fear and hubris or like being a good graphic designer? I think both. I think it's like a winning combination. <laughs> he, had, he had a, he was kind of just the most chill, unafraid guy. Got, a, got a, also like a really friendly disposition, which I think like got him away. Like he got a lot away with a lot of like mischievous activity um or he would get caught and then like kind of like finesse his way off the hook so he had that going for him and he also was a visual artist and as uh, is like very meticulous at editing and and has a lot of a high threshold for spending a lot of time on details so i think that those are the the things that made him successful in the video. <laughs> that's great uh and did he did he did he stick with that? Is he doing it? Uh, no, he stopped. He actually got into a, uh, he got pulled over with shrooms when he was like much younger <laughs> than he is now. This is years and years ago. And he, uh, and he kind of stopped all that nonsense. So he didn't know he had them in the car. And, uh, yeah. and from that point on, he, he like, was like, all right, I've got to, got to get this stuff together. No legal activity since he was like a teenager. That's good. That's a good lesson for the show. Uh, and I'm on his side. I, I think I think they were put there. I think the cops put them there. So yeah, yeah they planted them. <laughs> um, uh, I tried to uh, put some like interesting things next to me here, just really for the looks of um, of what's going on. One of the things next to me is my driver's license. Uh, oh wow! What yeah. a coincidence. <laughs> I'm about to hold it up to the camera, but then I'm like, if you know the last four digits of my phone number and the expiration date of my license, is that bad? I don't know. I don't know enough about this to know the answer to that, but... You haven't had to research any rules that involve the... I feel like if you put like a flash, a flash, yeah, like a little flash, no one will be able to read it. See, that's not giving me anything. That's just like a blur of color at that point. Do you want to see mine? Mine's really bad. Yeah, I look like a crazy person. <laughs> it's really a bad pick. I'm yeah, I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not agreeing with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you are, though, <laughs> and that's okay. That's fair. 
Um, oh yeah, I forgot. So you got a New York State driver's license. You've been in Denver, LA, and you spent enough time in New York as well. I live in New York. I am. Um, I live in Brooklyn, but I was out here, literally, like right as things were kind of hitting the U.S. I, I was, I was here, and then we kind of got stuck here, and that we just felt like things were too chaotic in New York to go back by the time we were supposed to go back. So we're kind of just waiting for things to get a little less um, rough over there. Yeah, you're not wrong. I think if you went to the airport and sh showed your ticket for New York City, they would, um, they would be like, hey, yeah, I'm, yeah, we're sheltering in place. We're not really down to travel right now. So <laughs> no, that, not like, how are we going to get back? When are we going to get back? You know, such a weird. Yeah, um, I like that phrase, down to travel. DTT. Down to travel, not down to travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I I've, I've lived in New York. I went to school in New York uh, for four years, and then I lived there for a while, I, and then had like a couple years out in LA and love it. But um, ended up moving back. Good. We're glad to have you on the East Coast. Like I said, I'm up in New Jersey, like an hour and a half. I recently moved back home. I'm in, in Northwest Jersey. Uh, where, where in New Jersey? As far northwest as you can go in Sussex County. Uh, is that where, where's Howell in relation to that? Do you know Howell? I believe Howell is, is quite south of us. Um, <laughs> but New Jersey's not that big. It's like three and a half hours top to bottom. But I think but Howell is certainly south of us just because we are as far as you can go. Uh, we're you know, on the Delaware River, um, you know, crossing over into Pennsylvania and New York, all you can throw a stone to all three states. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, I had an ex who lived in Howell and his family, we would go there all the time. I loved New Jersey, what I saw of it, so. Uh, it, it's very diverse, and you've touched on my favorite topic, which is New, New Jersey, 21 counties of, of beauty. Uh, <laughs> it's the Garden State. Um, and yeah, not everyone, people think of New Jersey, they think of the Sopranos or Jersey Shore, but there's this beautiful part up here. Yeah. Uh, so do you commute to the city for UCB and stuff, or do you? Yes, but not regularly. Um, like I used to live in Jersey City, and it was I was much more active at UCB. And then when I came back here, uh, I'm working at the Family Biz at the moment, and uh, Family Biz. The Family Biz is uh, also not a sponsor, so we don't need to t talk about them too much. Why um, not though? You know. <laughs> uh, RV rentals, motorhomes, trailers. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, which has been deemed an essential business um, by the governor of New Jersey. Um, so uh, okay. we are op well, open. It makes sense. People, people want to get away. Yeah. It's true. Um, and we don't ask questions. Actually, we do. <laughs> we want to know why they're taking <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are you taking this? How many people are you putting in it? Um, uh, yeah, it is. It's interesting. Some people, um, one gentleman, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's planning on going to Florida and he, and he, and, um, uh, he, then he's like, you know, I don't, right now Florida's like saying that he needs to quarantine for 14 days. And he's like, I don't know if I want to do that. So he's going to Tennessee. So you, you have options, uh, America. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, good him. Yeah. If you, um, if you need to get back to Brooklyn. Let me know. And parents are doing okay. I mean, it's good that their business is staying open. Yes, I am. I am very. I'm. I realize how lucky I am. That one that I get to live in a place where I can stretch my arms out and not touch another person, and that the business is still doing okay, and uh, we still have our, our employees there. Yeah, which is like another reason. I, I feel I chose this charity of uh, helping out um, tipped workers because they seem to have like a real raw deal right now. Um, yeah. Because restaurant, there's no incentive for people who run restaurants to um, bring back their workers, and which is understandable. But yet, you know, a lot of these folks, especially a lot of them are younger too. It's like your first job, and you might even s still be on your parents' uh, tax returns, which means you can't get these stimulus checks. So, like, just an injection of a couple hundred bucks would be like a nice thing. Uh, my um, local coffee shop. I'm pretty close with the staff there, and. I've been keeping in touch with them and seeing how everything was doing. They shut down, but I guess they're reopening. And one of the employees was saying, you know, like, I want to get my job back. I want to go to work, but I don't have health insurance. And I don't want to go into that situation right now. 
before this ban is lifted and you are we're supposed to be like sheltering in place he's thinking of opening next week because yeah. i guess they sell they sell sandwiches and stuff and she was like i just don't know what to do so it's a really tricky place that a lot of them are in you know not knowing how to move forward in a way that's like responsible to their health and also like helps get it, things going again and not wanting to lose her job it's really rough yeah so let's transition from that into a song by mr neil diamond <laughs> um um oh my, I have a, I have a, a, sorry, a to bring the mood down. sorry to bring the mood down. I mean, it's <laughs> the reality of what's happening, though, you know. So. I, I am joking. I started it. And also, <laughs> uh, I think personal stories like that make it uh, help reveal to people. The, there's so many different sectors of the economy that people didn't realize that need to all work together. People are now learning that supermarket employees that are so vital. And it's not all, you know, yeah, the, uh, people forget about coffee shop employees and the choices they have to make and the person cleaning the coffee shop and the choices they're going to have to make next week. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's so you're see. playing Diamond now? Is that what you said? I, I had said Neil Diamond. Someone had requested Neil Diamond. Um, That's a good one. All right. Uh, we'll do a Cracklin' Rosie by Mr. Neil Diamond. Um, let's see. Uh, and this is by Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. And and um, you know, even though on the website I say if you spend a dollar twenty to cover the cost of the song, that's enough. Many people have given more. He just gave twenty bucks, and that's um, super generous. And I hope I'm not embarrassing Andrew by saying that. Uh, now your family's going to hit you up because they think that you're rich. So um, let's see. All right, Cracklin' Rosie. <laughs> so what other props do you have by your uh, by your I, I will show you, but I can't burn all of them. Uh, I got two other guests tonight. <laughs> oh, 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 right, right, right. <laughs> I'll show you another one in a moment. This is Cr Cracklin' Rose. Oh, don't you know Have me a time with a poor man's lady It's been on a twilight train Ain't nothing here that I care to take along Maybe a song To sing what I want No need to say please to no man um, That song makes me, reminds me that that's another way you can get back to Brooklyn is a, is a train, uh, a romantic midnight train that Mr. Diamond sings about. So but keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, RV number one choice, though. Uh, we'll get one out to you if you need one. Um, train, hitchhike, airplane is what I would say. Cru cruise ship around through the Panama Canal. That's choice number five. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, you asked about this prop up here. Um, I am a certified notary public right there. Okay. That's also for, I, I got that done uh, for work and for, and for anybody who wants things notarized. Um, like 300 bucks, right? It's, I don't think it's that much. And it's, it varies state by state in, in a dramatic way. For example, I'm a certified notary in New Jersey and New York. New Jersey, um, uh, well, so that New York, you had to pass a test, like 40 questions. So, so you got to study for it. New Jersey, you just write a letter to your local congressperson and say, can I please be a notary public? And they say yes, and that's it. Um, wow. And, there, and, and there's like a renewal can fee, you, but- Can you only do it in New Jersey, or can you do it, so you can only do it in New Jersey, though? No. I can, why? Do, are you applying to like the military or something and need me to notarize something for you? No, no, I'm just curious about how it works. Like, if you're going to get notarized, if you're going, no, it's not important. I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, can it be, can it notarize like, a like if, if, if New Jersey has the easiest way of becoming, you know, getting the, your certification or whatever. That's a good you question. You go to New York and do notary there, or are you only allowed to do it in New Jersey? Because they have that kind of protocol that's a little more lax. Yeah, I'm smiling because I, I forgot everything I learned in that New York state test. I'm going to say- You just have to do the test. So you just <laughs> know the very basic, which is, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> uh, I'm exposing myself to so many, you know, fraud charges here um well i guess you could do it i'm gonna say you can do it anywhere except um 
I have to, the person has to be in the room with you when you're notarizing it. So if someone from California is like, uh, wants me to notarize something, I, I, I couldn't. Um, I see what you're saying. Can I take the test in Jersey and go back to California? Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know. That's something to know. Oh, wait, I did figure it out. I figured it out, uh, Justine. I figured it out. The, re the, re the whole reason I passed it in New Jersey and New York was because you can't go state to state. That's um, what I was, Yeah, okay, cool. That makes sense. <laughs> Uh, we, I feel like we worked that out together. I appreciate your help. We did. <laughs> um, uh, can I tell you? Um, so I told you that my friend said Willow's their favorite character. Uh, I also thought it'd be fun to introduce you the way that mom, my mom, uh, remembers you, and maybe mom's everywhere. Because I told, I sent a picture, and um, she didn't, she couldn't think of your name, but she said, uh, "Oh, the, the the one married to the guy running for president." So she knew who you were. Yeah. yeah. And then in um, oh, Richard's coming in. Um, that's that's great. Um, and, and then in Mrs. Maisel, she said, "Oh, the the convert." Yeah, yeah. she's so, got it. She's got it right. I, I was worried about saying that to you because I didn't know if it was offensive that that people didn't remember or that she she defined you as being married to some guy. But um, no, oh, no, no. Yeah, it's not like in the show you said in, it, it wasn't like a big scene chewing scene where you said my name is Willa and everybody knows it. So like moms are off the hook. She said she's with the guy who's running for president. That's what she said. Yeah. Okay, good. As long as she doesn't think I'm married to him. A lot of people say you're married to that guy. I'm like, no, we're not married. That's part of the fun. Right. Uh, that's a huge plot point. Um, hmm. Yeah. No, she didn't. No, she picked up on that. She knew what yeah. was going on. I'm happy that anyone remembers me at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think after tonight... Uh, many folks will remember you. This has been a lot of fun. I'm not kicking you out yet, but I just I do want to say this has been a joy spending time with you. Yeah, yeah, I love this. Um, uh, so, <laughs> while while Rich is getting ready, I, I guess I'll just oh. um, wait. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Take take your time. Take your time. Wait, am um, I on there now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have so much to tell you. First of all, I just I, I somehow I got out. So just bear with me. I pressed the wrong button. Which I do a lot in these things. It, it, I hear you and I see you. Those are the two most important things. So don't fret. Yes, but I have to join. Hold on. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, do I, here we are. <laughs> do I, have we met before? You and, you, you're talking to me or me? No. Both Just, of you actually. I think we have met maybe briefly in an elevator at an audition. Did you get the role? I don't. Did you beat me out. Ninety percent probably uh, no. <laughs> it's because I'm not blonde. They went. They went with a blonde. It always happens. This just kills me. No, I, I, we, I. We briefly met in an elevator. I said hi or something like that. And how are you doing? And then uh, we didn't exchange names or anything. It was just a nice. Yes, thing. but uh, people say hi to me in other, in the elevators a lot, and I just don't remember them when they do. I, I don't go. Oh. Good. Oh, you're the person who says hi. That's me. Yes. <laughs> Hold on, let me turn the light off the back of me. Nope. Oh. How much better do I look? Yeah. I like to say, you looked great before, you look great now. So the reason why is because, do you live in New York? I do, normally, yeah. I'm in LA right now, but I do, I live in New York. Okay, because you're on Madam Secretary. I am on Madam. Well, I was. I'm not anymore because this what show's happens? over. And also, I hadn't been on it for a little while. But the I was. Show, yeah. The, the show is not on any longer. I believe. I believe the show's over. Yeah. Well, I knew so many people, and you know who I really know well, Eric who? Stoltz. Oh, he's so great. I love he's him. Great. Tim Daly, really well. Yeah, um, I know Tim pretty well too. Yeah, um, we did talk. Uh, well, he was dating someone when I was in Summerstock and we got to know each other. He's great. Where did you do Summerstock? At Williamstown. What show did you do? It was called Western Country. It was by Noah Heidel. Oh, I've done four shows up at uh, What did at you do? They were probably before you were born. Uh, no, I did Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Cool. I did The Big Knife, directed by Joanne Woodward with Bobby Cannavale. No, no. With, uh, I later on did it on Broadway with Bobby Cannavale. Right. It was with Adam Chris... Rapp in that one? Or he was going to be in it? Or oh, Adam Rapp on Broadway. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know Adam. I've That's a whole other story we're not going to talk about uh, while others may listen. 
No, I, I met Adam. I don't know him actually. And, and Richard, I think you know this, but I feel obligated to say that we are streaming live on right now. So just so you know, I just want to throw that out there. And is this as rude as can be that I haven't even said hello to you? I promise you that's not what this is about. I was enjoying the crosstalk. I just, as, as, a, as a responsible host, I just wanted to let you know that, that it's streaming. I, there is nothing, yeah, that, I can't say that. There are things that I would say that are not available for the country that I would say <laughs> in the privacy of my home, but everything that I will say like this, I would, the government is listening. Even yeah. if nobody out there in the world was listening, the government could be listening. <laughs> I know. It's true. Where are you, Richard? Uh, in New York City. Okay. Yeah. I like all the, the I spy array of things behind you. Oh, these are my kids. It's all my kids. There's there's Sam's desk. There's, there's Max. And I only... Because three weeks ago, before I cleaned it up, I would not have let the world see those desks. They were sky high with crap of a young person each one of them there are there two of them are 15 and one of them is 18. what's the what's the flyer directly behind your head with the this was oh i wish sky were looking at this is can you see oh yeah this is sky's uh page that's my daughter can you see that oh wow yeah 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 beautiful girl and very sweet as beautiful inside as she is out that's awesome. Well, I, I feel like I should go though, right? It, it's totally up to you, Justine. Um, uh, if, if you're enjoying hanging out and, and chiming in, I don't mind. Um, Two guys? I, you know, I, I told you it'd be, we'd be a half hour, so if you made other plans or any, any other quarantine plans, uh, I totally understand as well. So. I, I like, actually I actually weirdly do have a phone call with my meditation, someone's a, a meditation thing. All right. That's very good. I have somebody like that. Really? My friend David Yazbek's wife. Do you know who David Yazbek is? I don't. No. He wrote Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and the, the band's visit. And he wrote Tootsie, the music and lyrics okay. for all of those. And his wife, Betsy, is, is, uh, does all that and is quite good. Yeah, my, my, my guy is Jeff Colbert. Do you know him? He's an actor as well. I, I do know him. Yeah, he's sort of my era type, isn't yeah, he? He's, uh, he's, he's, a, he's been a meditation teacher for 18 years and studied it for longer than that. So he- Wow. He was, yeah, literally a week before quarantine, I had been wanting to learn about um, Vedic meditation forever and mm -hmm. uh, finally went through the whole thing about a week before this whole thing started. So it's been, it's been really helpful. <laughs> it, it is. It's astounding. And boy, did you pick the right time. And the right time to master it. It is a wonderful thing to to help you life. Much less also, the committing to doing it twenty minutes a day, twice a day, is this is the best time to have that. To have and, that, and it will be, and it will be a habit of yours for the rest of your life. It is not yet a habit for me. I did it, and then I stopped, and I've got to start again. All right. Well, then maybe this is um, an inspiration inspiration or some incentive we'll get back but on the good that I that I talk to you yes it is yeah. now I have one, other question. one yeah. other question do you do stand up no, no. Is oh, that no. I, I, are you I saying know. he has to go is no, that uh, to him <laughs> what <laughs> who does stand up sorry no, no 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 you I was talking to you oh I not, don't not the Curtis okay Curtis I am now all yours <laughs> Wait, why did you ask if I do stand up? <laughs> because I don't know why I put uh, two and two together and got seven. And okay. uh, I don't know why. I thought that you did stand up. Oh, that's cool. No, no, but I, I mean, yeah, it sounds terrifying to me. Do you do stand up? Not once in my life. All no. right. Never have. I do improv because I was at Second City, but no, I don't do stand up. Sounds what sounds were you guys talking about before I got on? He, how he does notar he's a note he does he's certified in giving notaries or notary public yeah that, that, that was the conversation <laughs> why are you um the reason is um my family has a small business and um uh it, it's it's helpful to help them out when i can that's fantastic i i i thought i needed a notary public just today and i rarely need one but because of some paperwork and stuff that had to go out today, 
uh, I made inquiries, but I didn't need it. Well, he couldn't but, have helped you anyway because he's in New Jersey and you're in New York and he's only allowed to do it in. I know, I wouldn't get the little stamp. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go, but it was go. so nice to meet you formally, Richard. And it's also, very nice to meet you. this is so great and have fun on your conversation. Thank, Thank you, Justine. I truly appreciate you being here. Talk Good soon. health and be safe. Yeah, you too, my friend. Bye. Okay, bye bye. That's, that's great. That was a much more solid interaction than, than an elevator interaction. I think that'll, that, that one will stick with you, I think. I wish you would think that I would remember. <laughs> think that I would remember. <laughs> Uh, she's um, lovely, very lovely. And how do you know her? Um, I don't. I just asked very nicely if she would do this. I explained what it was, and she was she was excited by it. Uh, and you're in Jersey right now? I am in rural New Jersey, as far north. Actually, you know where I'm close to. I'm, um, the reason we've never met, but the we have the the, the mutual connection at that summer camp uh, where your where your children went. I live near there. Wait, you live near uh, um, uh, what do you call it? The the Y camp. The 4-H camp, yeah, yeah. Oh, the 4-H, wait. Lindley, Lindley G. Cook 4-H camp, yeah. Oh, that one. <laughs> yes. You, you have no idea how many camps I've been through with the, oh, okay, so I know I know that one. Yeah, I, 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 met, you, I met your son. I met of camps. Yeah, I met your son, Max, uh, when I was working there and before. Oh, yeah. would he remember you? He um, you know, I played a banjo a lot and there was no one else doing that. That was my shtick. I had, so, you know. I'm well, then guy. forgive me. I'm going to take a picture and then I'll show it to him. Okay. We'll see whether he remembers. All right. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yes. I, I, that was a lovely, lovely camp. They went for a week with his friend Chrissy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris, Chrissy Rutenberg. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's cool. It's cool that some people come together and they, they come the same week and, uh, you know, but you're still stuck in a bunk with 16 other people, so you can't be that you can't be stuck in your little niche. They, they break you up. I know. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. So oh. that's the connection I have, and I live near there. So I'm in, I'm out in the woods right now. Um, I, I that's my perspective on on the on the virus. I I, I live in the woods, so it's a bit different. Yeah. Yes, but no. I mean, you're just solitary. If you yeah. were in the woods, I'm right. solitary, and I'm in an urban jungle. Right. You know, I didn't say safe. I just said it's. Uh, it takes longer for things to get out here. People take their time putting on masks and- uh, Oh they, yeah, it, oh, I still, see. Yeah, and they yes, go out. Yes. So it's, it's been interesting, but yeah, we're- And where are thanks. your parents? What was that? Where are your parents right now? They are- um, Like in that house the that you're in? <laughs> they're, not, they're not in here. I, um, no, they're, they are safe in a different household, not far from here as well. Because I, I, uh -huh. I used to live in New York and I came back here a couple of years ago to, to be in my hometown to work at the family biz. So uh, that's- um. My parents are not far away. So you're not in showbiz anymore? Well, this is showbiz. I agree. <laughs> um, I, I will agree, but but you don't, you're not an actor anymore. Did you do stand up? Uh, I did a lot of improv and um, I still host um, a comedy show, a comedy and bluegrass show about strange public records. So that's, um, it's more infrequent than usual, but I still do it. That's great. Thank and you. and is that what you do for a living, or do you help your parents? Do you now work in the family business? At the moment, I'm helping out the parents um, uh, in an RV and trailer rental business. Fantastic. Thank you, Richard. Fantastic. Yeah. I almost, and I really wasn't going to do this, but I was thinking about it because he brought it up. My brother-in-law lives out in North Carolina. Yeah. There was a trailer for sale, $6,000. Mm -hmm. Old trailer, but I was thinking of going out there, living in the trailer, and just playing golf every day, because you can play out there. Yeah. And then I said, nah. <laughs> silly. Buy a trailer for a month and a half, two months, yeah. and then try and sell it for six thousand eh, dollars. You don't want to do it. I don't want. Like, to. That's why you got to rent something from my family business. Then you don't own it. I see. <laughs> wow, that that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I take vacations with my family a lot. That would be an interesting thing to do. I um, thought of that. Yeah, uh, Richard, I am, uh, I'm gonna follow up on that, but I just wanna reset since we had a new guest come in. I just wanna explain to people who, who are watching what's, what's happening now. This is called the Lonely Jukebox. Um, I have discovered that um, through an app on my phone, I can look at all the jukeboxes in my hometown. The idea being that with the app, if you're sitting in the bar, you can play the song on your phone. Um, but now no one's sitting in bars, but the app still works. So 
there's only one jukebox in my town that still works because the rest have been unplugged because the bars are closed. Um, and first of all, I'm astounded that they have jukeboxes. <laughs> I, I, hate, I hate to say this, but they're really just big computer screens now. They're not the, sh the shape of a jukebox. It's like a big monitor. Yeah. Uh, the world has to change. I can't <laughs> change with it all the time. I'll accept it, but I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. If we couldn't get past that fact, we, we wouldn't get anywhere today. So I appreciate you uh, evolving on that one fact. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, people have been sending me money. As we speak, people are sending me money. Um, $1.25 for a song? For a song. And, and, you, I, and you tip the bartender two bucks. That's exactly right. Um, and I, I, Okay, your parents must be broke because they've taught you the wrong business model. <laughs> um, I hope my, dad, my dad's a businessman. He's, he's been in business 50 years, so um, he's keeping it to himself is what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's not sharing it. Actually... You, you'll appreciate this. Uh, my father did come up to me today and he said to me, Curtis, do you actually play the songs on the jukebox? Because that's kind of a waste of money. Why don't you just say that you are? Um, and I said, well, dad, um, you, that's why you're a small businessman and I'm a comedian because I think actually playing the song on the jukebox is like part of the fun. I um, agree with you. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> and then after we had that, that father-son talk, he gave me a $20 bill for, for, for the charity. So. The best thing in the world. Can I tell you a story about the two stories? Please, that's why about you're here. The yeah. beauty of you'll do it for anybody if you love to perform. Like you think that the fun is put on the jukebox. Doesn't matter if somebody's listening, put on the jukebox. Yeah. Here's the first story I heard. Could have happened, may not have. The first one was Tim Conway. Do you know who Tim Conway is? Yeah, the Carol Burnett show. In the Carol uh, Burnett show. Yeah. So he's at a party and somebody, or Harvey Corman, somebody wrapped him up like a dummy, like a mummy. Okay, toilet paper, toilet paper, toilet paper. And he kept it on and he said, somebody get me a, a Polaroid camera. He said, take a picture of me like this, okay? He cut out the face, placed it onto his license where his face was. And there was a stop sign near his neighborhood where there was always a cop waiting for somebody to do a rolling stop and go right through and not a, a complete stop. So he goes to that stop sign. And of course he doesn't go pull, come to a stop. He rolls through, sirens go. And cop pulls him over. He rolls down his window and the cop sees a mummy. Guy in toilet paper, gauze, whatever. Uh -huh. And he goes, all right, let me see your license. And he pulled out his license and there's the picture of him. <laughs> That's great. So one, one person as a, an audience. <laughs> and here's the second one. Okay. I heard it from a friend who knows if this could be true. Steve Martin was supposed to be coming up to Mel Brooks's house and he's walking up the driveway. And as he's walking up, he looks in the window and hears Mel Brooks yelling at his dog going, you are a bad dog. You are a bad, bad dog. I'm calling the doggy police. And he picks up the phone and the dog is there. Nobody's there. <laughs> and he dials the phone, he goes, yeah. Yeah, Rover just uh, went to the bathroom in the corner. Yeah. Yes, he is a bad dog. Well, I'll ask him. <laughs> you promise you'll never do it again? <laughs> he says, yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you. You're all right, and goes on. Can you imagine? <laughs> Could be apocryphal. Yeah. But if I, I hope it's not. I, I think it makes it sound more, I like that it's told as through the eyes of someone walking down past the window. It's like, it makes it even- Of even course. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he doesn't know he has an audience. He doesn't know anybody's listening. That's the purity of it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Love it. Um, well, we definitely have an audience, uh, Richard. So but this the is... jukebox doesn't. <laughs> no, I get that. What get is the that. most popular song played on that jukebox, do you think? Most popular song? Um, I... You would know. 
you get the requests. Oh, you mean what are the requests are coming in today? Um, or, can... or, or over the, over year, is, is now, is today the first day you've done it? No, no, no. This is, I'm in week number four. Um, yeah. uh, if, cumulatively, uh, Bruce Springsteen. Um, well, who'd have guessed in Jersey, but, <laughs> or, or in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Born to Run. Uh, last week I got made fun of because I don't know a lot about Bruce Springsteen or music in general, which is weird that I'm hosting this, but that's part of the fun. Yeah, okay. so. Yeah, the boss, Mr. The Boss, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Born to Run, uh, Glory Days, and um, I don't know. I forget what the other one was. Coming to no, America. No Sinatra, though, huh? Um, no. Uh, in the very first week, there was, oh, someone requested three, that's right, three of the same song, and one aversion was Sinatra. Um, uh, Send in the clowns. Someone said send in the clowns. Three. They wanted to play three times in a row. So I said uh, I'll play one Barbara Streisand, one Judy Collins. Um, is it Judy Collins? It wasn't Judy Collins. It was well because it because it caught my eye and Glenn Close. Glenn Close singing "Send in the Clowns." Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And then Sinatra. And then Sinatra. Yeah. Well, yeah. Streisand does it great. Yeah, Glenn 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 Johns Johns did it originally. Yes. Yeah. And you don't even know who Glennis Johns is, do you? Does not ring a bell. No. She was the mother in Mary in the original Mary Poppins. Oh, okay. Sister Suffragette. That's Glennis Johns. Um, she, which I'm sure your audience is dying to know about. <laughs> you don't know these people. Let's let's. You're uh, telling me. You're right. I do not know these people, but I know. <laughs> That you don't get a lot of people who, because they don't know how to get onto this thing. <laughs> where, um, where is this being? Where are people? Where is this being streamed? Absolutely. So I am streaming it uh, through the website lonelyjukebox.com, and I am streaming okay. it on, U on YouTube also, like straight okay. up on YouTube. Oh, it's on YouTube. Great. Yeah, um, and people find this. Um, I also posted it on Jimmy Pardo's. Uh, you know, his don't you love, love, love that man, Jimmy? I love Jimmy Pardo. That's that's wonderful. He's he's one of my favorite comedians, and I've I've never met him, so he's gonna pop in eventually. And uh, oh, he is the me. most facile. He just quick, just just keeps talking. He's talking, and sometimes I don't even think he knows what he's saying. It just <laughs> comes, and he just prays that it's lucky at the end of the sentence. <laughs> so good, so funny, so great, and nice. Oh my God, nice. Just, yeah, one of the great men. I think anyone who agrees to do this with me here is a nice man. So that Jimmy, and that's you too, Richard. You're a nice Thank man. You. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, what fascinating questions do you have to ask me? Because I've dominated the conversation a lot. Um, you know what? This popped into my head. You said you did Rosencrantz and Guildenstern uh, are dead. Mm -hmm. And um, I did that show in college. Oh, yeah. And um, one of the girls in that show, one of the women in that show, was chewing gum. And she did like a scene where she kind of like, like licked me and the gum stayed on my cheek when she like pulled away. On purpose? No, I just think she kind of forgot she had gum in her mouth. Um, well, that woman is not an actress nowadays is my guess. <laughs> because I don't think she took her part as seriously as one might. <laughs> um, I guess- But now it's oh Shakespeare, much less Stoppard. <laughs> I think you gotta, you gotta have all your teeth. When you when you're doing that stuff, yeah. So I know you, that, that didn't. I thought I was going to start that story and it would turn into a question, but it was really just a story. Um, unless you have a similar story about uh, um, on stage. Um, no, I don't want to go. No, stop art. Look, do, I, I do have a story about stop art. Yeah, uh, I've been lucky enough to do a few of his plays. Rosencrantz. I did uh, uh, a show called Rough Crossing. And I did a brilliant, brilliant a masterpiece, ridiculously smart, very tough to follow, brilliant show called Travesties, mm -hmm. which is about Oscar Wilde and uh, Lennon and uh, Tristan Sara all being in, uh, in uh, Europe, in this one town uh, in Zurich. But no, in, uh, where was it? In, in some, some town in Europe at the same time during World War I. Yeah. And it's about a, a, a very failed actor, poet, 
a man, a very failed man, a real disaster of a man. And he has a 25 minute monologue to start off the play. And he's an Englishman, very proper. Uh, a character that Tom Stoppard would write and I, I wouldn't normally play, mm -hmm. but I was asked to play it. And I was actually pretty good. I wasn't great, but I was, hey, I, you know what? I was great, but I wouldn't be your first choice. Okay. It was, it was on Broadway with, uh, what's his name? Tom, um, Tom, I can't remember his name. He's so, such a wonderful, brilliant actor. And I, I can't remember. Anyway, he, he, the play opened on Broadway about two years ago. I came to opening night. I happened to have worked with the actor. So I got to talk to him and we talked a little. I said I had played the part. And then I was lucky enough to meet Tom Stoppard. And I said, excuse me, Mr. Stoppard, you're now talking to one of your greatest fans. I've been lucky enough to do about three or four of your plays. And I actually played the lead role in Travesties. And when I tell you, he gave me a look like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you, you played this role? I mean, it was like, and he would have none of me. And, he's, and I had spoken to him once before, two, two or three years before that. He was, he's a very nice man. But uh -huh. the look on his face was as if uh, I were to say, excuse me, Mr. Stoppard, it doesn't look like it, but I have two heads. And he would go, and that's sort of what it was like. But I did play the role, and I was not bad. It is a great story because I think we've all been there where you met someone you looked up to. and uh, Yes, and, oh, yes. Guy. He just... He was, I, he was horrified that someone would bastardize his plays in this manner. He was just going, well, these Americans, what the hell? Are you kidding? Come on. So he was, but he was very nice about it. Is the man you're thinking of Tom Hollander? Is that the gentleman you were trying to think of? Yes. Who's doing your uh, research back there? Uh, thanks to uh, uh, my colleague, Tyler, uh, who, he's the one currently taking the money and putting the songs up, but he also did a little research for you. Very good, Tom Hollander, and he was brilliant. He was, he was, uh, he was, he was really magnificent in the role. I was a lot funnier. I was, <laughs> I was much funnier than he was. He was special, he was fantastic. But I really took the vaudeville of what Stoppard wrote. Yeah. Uh, in certain scenes, in certain dream sequences. And I, he was much more active when I portrayed him. But Tom was magnificent, magnificent, wonderful. Well, thank you, thank you for that story. That's, that's, again, that's exactly what I was hoping for, some, some stories from the biz. Um, before, I know you, pretty soon you'll have to head out. Um, we should play at least one song. We, I've also been playing the songs out loud, um, you know, from the list here. Uh, are are songs that. being played as we speak? Uh, yes, yes. Could your friend tell me what songs are being played right now? Yeah, I mean, um, he, he's making me a, a live spreadsheet. So the um, um, the current song is a uh, is by is by Sinead O'Connor. Uh, Nothing compares to you. Um, and maybe I'll give you three songs that are like in the queue, and maybe we can listen to the, to the beginning. I have a question. Yeah. Can yeah. you? Does the song have to be on that jukebox? That's the premise. That's the premise. Yeah. So how do people know the, what songs are on that jukebox? If, if they also, because <gasps> I'm Jimmy. telling them and they trust me, I'm a trusted name in comedy. And um, I know, but, but how, but, but are you putting out the list before? Be how do I know what songs are eligible to be played? Is that your right, question? Yeah. The jukeboxes have a very vast catalog and I have not run into the problem where the song is not available because it's, it's all digital. You can, they're all on there. Great. You know, yeah. Jimmy Carter was not on here. Um, he's, he's linked in. He's, I, I hope he heard us saying the glorious words that we spoke about. Does he want to come on? <laughs> uh, he's, he's, in, he's in the waiting room. He's uh, deciding if he wants to come in. Maybe he's, he can probably see us right now. He's deciding if the room is warm, warm enough for him. Oh, Jimmy. I believe. Uh -oh. Hello. Hi, Jimmy. I believe I, th I thought you had to let me in. That, that uh, if that was my fault uh, uh, being delayed, I apologize. But I could always listen to a wonderful story about Richie Kind. <laughs> Jimmy Pardo, we were singing your graces in ways you can't imagine. I could only say thank you for that. Um, here's what happened. The last thing I heard, because I've been watching the program, and um, 
Uh, the last I heard was you, Richard, asking him uh, what the most popular song was. And then I heard Bruce Springsteen. I figured uh, I got some time to go to the restroom. And then I came back <laughs> seconds ago. Um, <laughs> the fact that he actually didn't, uh, Curtis, that you didn't have an answer right away leads me to believe that uh, this is since you're in some cabin in the woods, this whole thing's a ruse to get people like Richard and I just to call and be your friend. for Absolutely. Minutes. This is right? a sham. I agree with you entirely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's but, no jukebox uh, somewhere. Nobody has an app. They know what jukebox is playing. But here's what's pathetic. We said yes. Yeah. Knowing <laughs> exactly that. what was going to happen. We knew. <laughs> we, we knew exactly what was going to happen. That's uh, uh, that's how needy we are. Uh, who is listening to you talk fast? Are you doing a lot of podcasts and stuff? I'm sorry. What, I, you know, I took my hair, earphones out. I, I can see. Out. I can see. I said, who is listening to you talk fast? Uh, when just now in the world are you doing podcasts are you doing interviews we are doing the pod we're doing uh we're actually doing three episodes a week if you are a paid subscriber Great. if you don't pay you're getting one episode um yeah we're, we're trying to uh, do some uh content for people so that they are uh, entertained uh during this Wonder. whole thing people that seem interested anyway but whatever huh. and where do you do it out it does everybody have zoom in Everybody's at their house now. We did a few weeks where uh, a core of us went to the studio. Um, and then we just realized once our governor here in California and mayor said, hey, can we avoid be seeing other people for a while? And that'll save uh, help people. Yeah, we were true. like, you know what? We have the technology. Let's do it from home. So that's what we're doing. It's true. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Anyway, well, you're well. Curtis, uh, you, you, are you, we're, we, we've, uh, uh, what's, what's the word? Overtook. There's a word. Um, when you when you take usurped full, listen oh. if, if i didn't want that to happen i would have said jimmy show up at eight o'clock and, and come and show up when you're told to show up but i said you know what it's a soft entry you can you know land when you want to and you, and you guys are friends uh and i just like seeing friends be friendly so i'm gonna have to I was, rewind I was, this and hear those nice words that were said about me that's okay I, that's, we'll, that's we'll repeat it i say you don't have to repeat it <laughs> but i want to i want to because the last time I saw you up at Sundance, was it? No, it was at San Francisco. Sundance, who am I? Who am I? Somebody favorite? No, no, no. no. But it, was, it was a town that's nice. It was San Francisco. San Francisco. And you start with, and I was part of your show. Yes. But I listened to you do half an hour, uh, having never really heard, I heard you in a club. Right. And I talked about your facility with words and that you talk so fast, it's as if you're praying that when the sentence is over, it's as funny as you think it is. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, that kind of goes back to something that happened in high school. My friend Paul, who is now a doctor in Florida, and I got to imagine he's at the beach at the moment. Um, uh, he uh, believes in that theory. So uh, he's probably at the beach. Anyhow. Oh, God. God bless yeah. his soul. because it's going to oh. uh, We are not as close as we were back in those days in high school. But in high school, we were best of friends. And uh, I, I said something in line at the cafeteria once, uh, I, and I, the, the end of it was uh, toast. The answer was toast. Whatever I rambled on in the line at the cafeteria was toast. And whatever I said was funny, and the last word was toast. So we came up with the theory of toast, that no matter what you say, as long as it's fast, <laughs> people will go, ha ha! <laughs> so I live by that. I, it's the truth. It's it's a, Groucho Marx uh, will say, you know, the funniest things he said. He had no idea that they were going to be funny when he was finished. Um, but you are, yeah, I, 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 you're, you're superior at what you do. Oh my gosh, thank superior. you. Superior. Oh my god, you're, you're breathless. You're you 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 take the wind out. You're so good. You're you're just so good. And I had a fun night that night. That was a great night. And that um, was with. Uh, um, uh, who was it from uh, from the office? Oscar Nunez. It was from uh, with with Oscar, who is yeah. who I never realized was as talented as an improviser as he was. Boy, is he a good? He's, he's, a, a, he's an amazing he's improviser. Actor. Yeah, I had no idea. So um, I love seeing that, and then I also I hate it because I don't consider myself a very good improviser, and people do. And then when I see you people do so well at it, I go, "Here is my evidence." This no. is who I'm not as good as. I'm gonna I'm gonna be that annoying uh, yeah, show business a hole that you were wonderful that night. Everybody loved you. I'm very good. Okay. Uh, but you were you were. It was a it was a highlight of. Uh, the, I'm told it was a highlight of the festival. The uh, the 30 minutes that you were on stage. So I will take the <laughs> words for that. <laughs> I did hear that too, but I'm not gonna bring it up. All right. <laughs> it was. Uh, 
Uh, I'd like to think I, Oscar and I had something to do with that, that it was the three of us. It was lovely having you there. It was nice having I'm you. I'm glad I could help you out then. With us. So God bless you for being there. All right. <laughs> now, Richard, I, uh, Curtis warned me that you have somewhere to go. Where do you have to go? Well, I'll tell you something. Somebody from Second City, hmm. a lovely man named Craig Taylor, who was our stage manager, as somebody put it, he has probably seen more improvisation, and I'll finish this sentence and every word matters. He has seen more improvisation than anyone else on the planet. He was at Second City for 41 years. He was stage manager for the shows six nights a week and saw all of the improvs afterwards for 40 years. I don't think there are people who were, you know, he passed away young. He must have been about 62. Um, and he passed away a, a little while ago. He, he worked up until about seven months ago and an illness took him. Yeah. So we had a virtual, everybody came on and we all had a Zoom memorial, which was really something. And Great people spoke, Steve Carell, a, a, lot, a lot of people spoke. Uh, and then because we had such a good time on the thing and we were, you know, we, we, it was sort of, a, I wrote a little thing saying, you know, we don't tell each other how much we love you while we're alive, which is what I, I do say it to people. I've just said it about you and now to you about how much I, I admire you, but we don't say enough. So we decided at eight o'clock tonight, we're going to go and maybe have a Zoom conversation. Great. However, and I hope people listen to you and talk to you and Curtis. Yeah. But that eight o'clock thing, I have a question. You know that we are the world or whatever they're doing with uh, with the, uh, the the singers and the comedians. Do you know oh, what yeah. I'm talking about? Will that be re-shown or do you have to watch it now and that's it? I don't have a strong. Uh, I don't have an answer for you. I, I, but maybe Tyler can look that up and find out. Get back Do me up. a favor, Tyler, look it up. Because I don't want to chase people away from here too, but I'm sure that they're aware of it. Um, and, and, and I don't want to see the numbers drop considerably when Richard Kind leaves and then... Look, I will do the best I can to carry out. Then Jim, I can yes, I, I encourage everybody who's listening, do not, do not switch. Listen to Jimmy Pardo. Uh, and I'm only going to be on here for 20 minutes and then you can go watch Lady Gaga noodle around on the That's keyboard. right. They're not, she's not going to be on the first 20 minutes. Right? They're going to save her. Yes. Yeah, you've they're heard closest. Colbert. Yeah, you, you, you've heard the, the, all of them. You hear them every night. What what, what new stuff do they have? Right. They're going to they be nothing. Trump and we're, we're going to be tired of it. Right. All right. You talk. Uh, does Tyler have, a, have an answer? <laughs> not yet, Richard. I apologize. I'm oh, this. Tyler, everybody, Tyler. Everybody, everybody let you down. <laughs> All right, I, I will get off. I have spoken long enough. Curtis, have, have I answered every question that you need me to answer? And then some. And and just so it's no misunderstanding, since you've been on, uh, we've got like 20 song requests. Oh! We didn't get, yeah, we didn't, and with that comes donation. So you know, we didn't get to many of them. Um, no surprise though, because uh, we, we were chatting. So the money, we still get the money even though we didn't play the song out loud for everybody. So you, you've been- Oh, do you usually play the song? Well, it depends how the conversation's going. Well, with Jimmy, who knows? Maybe we'll have to play every song. Well, yeah. can you play the song in the background, like uh, background music? Yeah, yeah. Well, that would that would be that. Why didn't we do that the whole time? Um, I don't want to compete with the music. That might have worked for Richard's segment. That's not going to work for mine. <laughs> yes, I understand. <laughs> I want very much, Richard. All right, I'm going to say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, Curtis, have me on whenever you'd like. This was very enjoyable. Jimmy, I wish you well. We'll I love talk you. soon. Okay. That's yeah. very Always great to Thanks see you. The best. Good to see you. You bet. Bye bye. Leave me. Still there. Leaving <laughs> meeting. Leaving. Take it easy. Still there. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, thanks for. Getting there. Curtis? That cross talk was was very fun. And thanks. I hope it was. Right. I feel like we overtook it, and I apologize for that. No, no, no. It, uh, it'll be a good contrast. The, the premise of this is that um. We do play a couple songs and they spark some some inspiration. With Richard Kind, you want to guess how many songs we got to? Well, it sounds like uh, what you said, you get to zero. Zero songs. Zero songs. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think you get to zero during my segment too, because uh, I think you just reserve the music for when it's a uh, uh, lull. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, right. I'm not going to play it in the background. If there was, if someone requested to play a song, here's the thing. I do not know a lot about music. I'm putting that on the table. So if someone says, play, like one person, Jeremy said, play Thin Lizzy. I couldn't, I wouldn't even know where, where to be, what, what it sounds like. So well, sometimes you, I play 30 you seconds play the, uh, You would play The Boys Are Back in Town by Thin Lizzy. All right. And I know that song. I, that one I know. I didn't know it was a Thin Lizzy tune, but yeah, it goes, The Boys Are Back in Town, The Boys yeah. Are Back in Town. That one I do know. Can I, let me ask you a question, because I heard you, I was listening to, um, I don't know if it was when you were I'm with Richard or, uh, boy, I apologize, I don't know the actress's name, but Justine. she's very, very talented, who was on earlier. Yeah, Justine. Uh, Justine, is it Lupe or Loop? Loop. Loop, uh, who, by the way, is just amazing on Succession, as uh, that entire cast is. Um, but uh, so you were talking to one of those two as I was uh, bouncing, watching on the YouTube before I joined you guys. Uh, not YouTube, uh, the, you know, the uh, lonely jukebox dot com. Yeah. And um, you mentioned that you're a bluegrass guy who plays banjo. That's right. Uh, so I will confirm for you, you're not a music guy. <laughs> Just based on uh, no, no. Now, now that I've done my stupid joke, yes. Uh, how can you say you're not a music guy when you play banjo, which is uh, some people argue is the hardest instrument to play? Sure, I, I mean just that. Um, in school, when all the kids were listening to Green Day and things and things like that, I think to me Green Day is, is like a, a metaphor for every song when I was growing up. I just I had no interest. It, it felt very adult to me. I had no interest in it, and my my, my parents didn't have a lot of music either. My mom exercise to the beach boys and there was um and my dad really likes uh uh the oak ridge boys and uh, that's about it so 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 what what would you be listening to then like how did you get into the banjo like who, who, is it uh, lefty frizzell is that a banjo player i think he's a guitar player um, so okay I, I picked it up a little bit i always liked it but i didn't start playing until i was 25 26 i was in washington dc and um I had a lull, six week, a six week lull between improv shows for whatever reason. And I said, I got to do something. And I, I, I drove an hour to, to a guy in Virginia and bought a banjo and started taking lessons. DC is apparently a bluegrass town. Mm. Um, all these bluegrass musicians, they were in Nashville for the longest time, but then the, there was no work there. So they migrated up to like Baltimore and DC uh, where there's work um, apparently. And um that's why DC is a bluegrass town too. So I didn't know that. And uh, that's interesting. What made you decide you wanted to play the banjo? Because everybody in the world's always said, Hey, you know what sounds horrible to my ears? The banjo. <laughs> what made you choose that? I think, and I agree hundred um, percent about the sound of it. However, if you walk into a room with it, 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 it's shaped in a funny way. So it's both a funny instrument. And when it's done correctly, it is nice. Um, yeah, Earl Scruggs is like the father of the banjo. That's so, why I meant to say Earl Scruggs when I said Lefty Frizzell, so I, right, yeah. I, I apologize. Yeah, so, you know, if you listen to the very, like, Earl Scruggs at Carnegie Hall, with, um, which was like a big deal because they let these, you know, um, backwoods folks into Carnegie Hall, it's a, it's a terrific album. Uh, that's kind of like one, and that's what spread bluegrass to the, to the world. Okay. And like, really, since then, uh, like, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou was like a big influence on bluegrass. And those like the two biggest influences. Uh, um, I agree that I thought that soundtrack was terrific. Um, whether people liked the movie or not, it's a different story. I enjoyed it. I thought George Clooney was great as he is in everything. That's right. Uh, I agree. I, you know, I, 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 I crap on the banjo. Uh, yet, uh, whenever I hear somebody play the banjo, I enjoy the hell out of it. So I don't know why <laughs> I'm, uh, I guess I always, I always just kind of think of, to your point of a guy walking into the room with the banjo. I kind of remember that for me from like in grade school, where they go, oh, we got a guest for you today, students. And then, and then here comes this weirdo hippie with a banjo and uh, always way too proud of it and yeah. just real, just way too comfortable for what was happening. Uh, Everything so you said is true. Sometimes I'm guilty of it. But you know what? Sometimes other people ask you to get the banjo out. And do I have it in my car just in case they ask? Yes, but I wasn't going to bring it out. You did, damn right you do. <laughs> uh, hey, can I ask you a question before? Because I know you have to reset this too and explain to Maybe yeah. people that are just joining now, the, 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 the Jimmy Pardo segment has begun. Uh, but that behind you, is that a veterinary's office, a veterinarian's office? What do you have going on? Are you doing some sort of uh, procedures back there? Well, I'm just, I'm making myself available if asked. Uh, I will serve if asked, but no one's asked me. Um, no, that's my kitchen table, but I got a lot of plants on it. Okay, it's a kitchen. Oh, it, this oh, angle, it, kinda, it looks medicinal. Yeah, yeah. No, so this is just my desk, but back there oh, is my kitchen. Jesus, that is a crazy... Uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, perspective, right. Perspective, yeah, so yes. Back here is my kitchen table. I see. 
up here. I thought that desk was part of what was happening in the other room. That is. Uh... No, no, no. This is just my desk. Uh, here's a book about. Um, I have some props up here. I'm not going to lie. It's a, answers to B questions. Okay. Yeah. I only do A questions. I don't. Uh, I don't deal with the secondary questions. <laughs> Attaboy. Uh, uh, don't, don't attaboy me. Don't you attaboy me, you dickhead. I'm <laughs> not going to allow that. <laughs> Uh, so I apologize. I, 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 not unlike Richard does, I, I don't know how to shut up. Uh, please explain to the people, uh, uh, yeah. uh wh how, how and why you're doing this and how they could donate. For those of you just joining, um, or those of you who've been here and, um, are, are confused, this is the lonely jukebox. Um, in my town, as in many towns, all the bars are closed by law. Um, and, uh, using the touch tunes app on my phone, I was, able to see that all the jukeboxes are also turned off, except for one. Uh, it's in the airport pub and package. And so I am playing songs on that jukebox uh, live. And um, uh, if you send me a dollar twenty using Venmo or another service, I'll play that song on that jukebox. Uh, nobody will hear it because the bar is empty. But if you do that, uh, I will then donate $2 to servers, bartenders, kitchen staff, hosts, who have lost work during the shutdown. Wow. And uh, that's the premise. And we're gonna be doing this. I invited Jimmy on because uh, uh, that way you don't have to look at me the entire time as I describe it to you. Um, and he knows a lot about music. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll talk about that and maybe we'll just, we'll just chit chat. But if you, to give the money, you should be on lonelyjukebox.com. That's where my Venmo is written. Um, and that's the key. Uh, the, the phones are open for, for your suggestions, so. So, uh... A quick question, though. Follow, I got to follow up on what you just said, and hopefully uh, the, uh, the people that are watching right now will donate this money and, uh, and so on and so forth so that I can leave here feeling like I was a successful guest. Um, the, um, are you sure there's nobody there? Like, is there a janitor that when all of a sudden, you know, Vogue by Madonna pops up, uh, he uh, gets the crap scare out of him like he's in a Scooby-Doo episode? Like, is there, a is there a chance a human being would be just sweeping up and then all of a sudden you know, uh, music and they're, and they're rattled and then a, a mop bucket spills over. Yeah. I, I appreciate you thinking of that, of that, that janitor. I went to the airport pub and package the other day. I yanked on the door. Um, it's closed. It's okay. Closed. Yeah. But doesn't somebody have to go there from time to time to make sure that like that, that rats don't take over. Like doesn't there have to be some sort of human movement so that, uh, vermin don't get, uh, comfortable. I don't know. I mean, how they gonna, you're not supposed to go out and travel. How are they going to get there? Um, and you know what? It's, it's also, I'm not there right now. Your, your theory may hold true. And I, I think we're providing a service if, to that person rather than frightening them. Is my, my Do you opinion. think, and, and I only thought about this because of what you just said. First of all, I think you are providing a service if that's in fact what's happening. But do you think there's a chance that this bar is open and they've just told you they're closed because they're <laughs> sick of you and your boozy ways showing up over there? Um, I am, I am not welcome at the airport pub, uh, anymore. <laughs> Why are you not welcome there anymore, Curtis? I'll play along. <laughs> well, it's located right behind an airport. So, um, I like to hop in there and then I go to the airport and uh, take a few planes for a joyride. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, and what is it? Is it, uh, uh, cause I'm not familiar. Is it a major, is it an international airport or is it like a, a Cessna airport? It's a Cessna airport. Very rarely used. Uh, most famously, it ha did have a very small air show from like uh, 1966 to 2003. The gentleman who used to own it, uh, that's Paul Stagger, uh, we lost him at 96 years old. So um, it doesn't have, you know, no one's organizing that anymore. It's hard to organize an air show. So uh, ever since, you know, it's interesting growing up, and I'm sure, I'm sure it was the same for you. You know, I went to day camp as a kid, uh, you know, during the summers. Uh, uh, and Every year, the part of the trip was you'd go down to the, to, this was at Chicago, you'd go down to Lake Michigan and you'd watch the air show. And it was, uh, you know, the, the Blue Angels would come and do their thing and skydivers would come in. And I actually found it to be pretty uh, entertaining and fascinating. And then, but as a kid, you never think about how dangerous that is. And now, I, do they even do them anymore because of crashes and stuff like that? Or They, they do still do them. Um, but the one by me is gone. There's one an hour away in Greenwood Lake. I don't think they do it. So that there's probably 20% of what they used to be, but I, I still see some advertisements. Yeah. I would uh, I, I, like, that's something my son will never get to experience. I, I, I'm sure he'll be fine, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's, oh, son, you don't know the days of the air show. One of the greatest things being a child of that air show is they had a little shtick that they would do. Um, and I didn't know they did this every year until I went for a second year, but they have a guy 
riding a lawnmower and he's got a microphone on, which, and like, um, he, the guy riding the lawnmower goes to the announcer at the air show. Um, and he says, you know, I've been mowing these lawns for, for 20 years. I never get to fly in the planes. And they said, well, sir, you can't fly the planes. You're the lawnmower man. And then, uh, well, he's like, well, I just want to be a passenger. And they say, fine, we'll let you be the passenger, uh, Rusty, you know, I'll be doing this. And then he, he like hijacks the plane and then he flies it around and they're like, and they're like explaining, sir, you got to pull up on the throttle. And it, mm. it, it's quite a shtick. And the first year you go, you believe it. Um, right. Your, your son won't get that, that wonder of believing a, a lawnmower man's, uh, um. I'll tell them that story though. If that, if that'll make you feel better, I'll pass that along to him and I'll tell it as if it's my own. I'll be one of, you know, in my day, son, there was the, the lawnmower man would show up now, not the Nicholas cage movie. And then, uh, uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I'll do. That's my <laughs> false premise of the day. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's pick one of the songs from the list to, to recognize the people that were putting these suggestions in here. Okay. Um, we got one coming in right now. Oh, I'm, I'm it's Springsteen. No, we're no, we're not doing Springsteen. Um, I'll let you choose, Jimmy. I'm going to give you three options. We got okay. um, uh, MC Hammer, Too Legit to Quit. Uh, we got Bewitched by Say La V. Um, and Wind Beneath My Wings by Wow, Ben Midler. Um, I guess you got to go with Hammer, don't you? Like. Uh, Wind Beneath My Wings is a beautiful song. I don't want that janitor breaking down because there's no question his wife left him. <laughs> um, and then that second one, I don't even I don't even know that song. Was that Say La Vie by by Bewitched? I think you have a the the, the artist is Say La Vie. The song is Bewitched. Um, I don't have a clue what that is. I don't I don't know that one. And I is that a is that a current song? Um, or yeah. or is it from uh, ninety three to two thousand four, which I admittedly know zero about musically. Um, the answer is a song, oh, it's an Irish girl group from 1997. Well, that fits that little area that I spoke of, uh, but you know what? I'm going to change my, uh, my request. I'm going to go with the Irish girl group. I don't know them. Okay. And, uh, I like the Celtic. Um, yeah. Let, let's see if we can get, uh, get this up on that. All right. Who's going to do this? Who's going to, is Tyler going to do that uh, for us? I took care. I took care. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I, th I think I'm kind of losing you, Curtis. No problem. No problem. Oh, you're back. Here. There you go. Hang on. All right. Now, why would somebody pick this song? Do they know it's on that jukebox? Or is this one of those jukeboxes that kind of has just access to Spotify or something and can play anything? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the Spotify, basically, yeah. yeah. But who would choose that? Like, what, what made them pick that song? That's interesting. So, I don't, I, I don't know exactly, but um, um, I told people, there's two reasons you might pick a song. One is because you love this song and you just want to blast it into the night for whoever's listening. Um, or if you hate the song, and you think it only deserves to be heard by nobody. So, yeah. I don't know. Then. Can you hate that song that we just played? No, I don't think you can. Honestly, it doesn't sound like a song that I would hate. Although I could see people hating the Bette Midler song. I do not. I think it's a fine song, but I could see people thinking that's overwrought. Yeah. Um, and who, I, who, who dislikes MC Hammer? Those are the, that's a fun song. Yeah. I, I get, overall, I get the impression these are songs people like. And if they don't, they, they usually they would state it in the uh, request. They're like, I play see. this because I hate glory days um so no i think she likes it maybe it takes her back to a place um or yeah or she thinks that the rats and the covids one through 18 that are sitting in the bar right now right uh, lamenting their lives might you know deserve a little pep in their steps so. there's no doubt this bar has got some germs and viruses in it right i mean there's uh <laughs> I, I would agree um uh I went to the bar the other day and outside they had a sign that the sign's always there, not just because the virus it says no MC colors, um, which no MC colors. Now I don't know what that means. Uh, no motorcycle club colors. Okay. So <laughs> it's one of those. So does that mean that now listen again, I don't know uh, from this world. Does that mean that they're not allowed in like, Hey, we're telling you we're not a motorcycle bar or is it a motorcycle bar and they don't want, they don't want trouble. 
The latter. Yeah. The, they, if you want to put on your, your Hawaiian shirt, you're fine. Or if you want to wear like a generic Harley Davidson shirt, they're all for it. But once you put on the red and blue and white, the so red and blue, um, I'm not, I'm not in a motorcycle hookup either. Um, so yeah, but you shouldn't wear, you shouldn't wear your colors. So how do you think the motorcycle guys would have liked if somebody puts on that say la vie tune that we just, uh, <laughs> heard? do you think, do you think that's what the money, I don't know what motorcycle guys are into. I mean, are they all into Leonard Skinner? I mean, what, and Bob Joby, what, they have to have like more than that, don't they? Yeah, no, I, I bet one out of 10 would, would, would like it and would try to get the other, would hope the others would get on board, but, but would quickly say mm, next, maybe next time, Brutus. I agree with you. And then I think, I think is uh, once they realize nobody's going to be on board, they're going, you know, I'm just busting balls. Nobody likes this song. <laughs> We're trying to get fool you guys, but there's no way they would own up to it. You really think that say love the, the Irish group from 1997. <laughs> favorite group? Come, on, come on. Right. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way um uh i, I made a note when, when richard was here and i wrote down facile he described you as facile and I, i'm hoping you would say it again because it's a great word so i want to give you that compliment before our time is over so uh, you're uh I, now here's what's going to happen i'm going to have to google it the second <laughs> i'm done so yeah. that i could either be insulted or complimented um <laughs> i like to think the words it was wrapped around makes me think it's a positive um yeah. so I'll, i thank you yeah, uh, I'll, I'll pass that along. Um, I, I just didn't want to forget. Um, J Jimmy, um, so the, the airport, as we, as we just discovered, the airport pub is a little bit of like a, it's a dive bar. Um, in, your, uh, in your travels throughout life, have you had a favorite either dive bar or dingy restaurant or hole in the wall um, bakery that like sticks out for you? You know, I don't know if I have a favorite uh, necessarily. I was a drunk for many, many years. Uh, you know, I'm sober now. It'll be 21 years in July. Uh, but I was a uh, I was a massive drunk in the 90s. Um, so uh, there's a chance I don't remember what was a nice bar and what was a dive bar <laughs> because uh, it didn't matter to me as long as they had Miller Lite ready to go. Um, <laughs> you know, I also, when I first started going on the road as a comic, which was the early 90s, um, and I, you know, I, I kind of was uh, just a kind of a, I don't want to use the word sheltered, but I was a, just a nice guy from the South suburbs of Chicago. I didn't mm -hmm. really do anything crazy. And so when I went on the road, you know, the, the comics would all say, Hey, let's go to the strip clubs. Let's go. Uh, let's go to the, this, uh, this, this bar. And, and so sometimes we would go to bars that were like, you know, basically like somebody's you know, uh, it might have even been like their, their garage that they converted into a strip club that then they had beer. It was the so I've been to many of these places. Um, yeah. uh, having a favorite would uh, would be weird and creepy. Um, but I also went to ones like in Cicero, Illinois, that um, were basically like um, like speakeasies. You had a knock on the door and they would slide the little thing to make sure you weren't a cop. And when they saw that you were just a loser like me, drunk at <laughs> two in the morning, they would let you in and then you'd go in there. And basically it was, uh, I, I didn't know this, but I, I just thought I was going to get drunk. Uh, <laughs> there was some um, uh, illegal activities with ladies going on. Um, if you so desired. Um, I just thought that the ladies enjoyed uh, speaking with me. A uh, little <laughs> did I know that they were trying to uh, drum up business, but apparently that's what like, they were doing. It took five or six times of you being there, just not knowing what was going on. To it took... I'd like to think I caught on before that, uh, but I still would go because it was the thing, like I said, we would do our shows, then we'd all go, and I couldn't even tell you the name of them. I, I, I don't have a clue. I'm not being uh, cagey. Um, but they'd say, hey, who wants to go to blah, blah, blah. And I, I remember one time we went, and there was a, co a comic named Scott who is no longer with us, I'm sad to say. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, hey, what goes on back there? And he goes, and he explained what goes on back there. And I said, well, well do you ever do that? And he said, no, I'd rather buy a VCR. I'd rather buy something useful in my life instead of having 10 minutes with a woman that, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And so uh, oddly, oddly enough, I think that's the reason I never did it. Not the fact that it was, you know, illegal or anything, yeah. but just the idea of, yeah, you know what? I think I'd rather keep my money too. That makes sense. Yeah. And, and that, that reasoning is, is healthier. It's, it's more likely to stick uh, to have that, that reason behind it. Because um, you may one day want to turn to a life of crime. Um, but you'll never want to like waste your money. Is um, hundred percent agree. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Although Thank I, that said, I, I guess, I guess for uh, all the years I was a drunk, I wasted a lot of money just, uh, you know, buying all that booze. And um, I, I did spend money frivolously, 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 hello, frivolously. <laughs> there it is. 
facile, yeah. facile. <laughs> um, in the um, in the nineties, I know I did. Uh, I spent money stupidly, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, there wasn't a concert in the nineties that I didn't go to. Like I would go, uh, literally, somebody would call up and go, "Hey, you want to go to that? You got it." And I would just <laughs> buy the tickets and go. Um, and then that bit me in the ass financially at the uh, at the end of the decade. Well, you, you got them all in while you could. Uh, That's true. I can't go to concerts now. I've already. I, I think every show that I had planned to go to between, well, we were supposed to see Kesha on May 5th. And I think the Doobie Brothers in September. And I think that Doobie Brothers show is the only one that hasn't been canceled yet. Everything else has been postponed and and pushed back or just out and out canceled. And uh, I think my wife and I uh, were, and, and my friends, and I, were, I think we had like seven shows that we were planning on going to. And right now that Doobie Brothers one is our last hope. Do you think... Um... I had some shows canceled too, and I held out to the last minute, like you know, because you think you're special. You think you think the Doobie Brothers are like, no, 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 Doug, hang on. I know we got this, everybody. Or I think the, isn't the logic maybe that in by September maybe there'd be some sort of like the most optimistic view is that we're you know we'd be able to go back to concerts, but I don't think we can even in September, right? I mean, there's there's no way that social distancing uh, is going to be like right. right. It's a concert. You can't sit every other seat. Right. If, if what we're being told today is is true, then, then of course not. But it's it's okay to have some place in your heart or your head that's like, well, well, maybe. I, I think our brains are not capable of processing five months from now. You know, right. it's just, and, you know and that's okay. It's it's a big when, ask. When this whole thing started, which was in you know, like I, I guess uh, when you know when we all started like canceling things. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to, I was supposed to be doing a gig in um, Palm Springs on um, boy, when was it? Uh, I guess at the end of March and at the mm-hmm. beginning of March as I told my agent, I, I think we got to cancel everything. You know, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to make sense. And, and I had uh, one was Portland, Oregon, which I was supposed to do at the end of April here mm-hmm. uh, at helium. And I said, so cancel Palm Springs, cancel Salt Lake city and then cancel uh, Portland. And he, he was like, he goes, well, let's take it one by one. He said, because if we're, if this is still happening at the end of April, we're in trouble. And it's like, here we are coming up on the end of April and we're not, there's not an end in sight. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah this is effing weird, man. Um, talking, talking about you going through that process. This is a thought I had a month ago and I thought it was an original thought. And now I think everyone had it. Have you had fans like point out that they're behind on episodes? So like we all knew how bad it was and they were still listening to like February and you guys are just like, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like it's, it's exciting for me. It, it's like watching a disaster movie and you guys are like heading right towards it. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. I, I agree with that because uh, in fact, we just did a, we did a show at Vitello's live, never not funny did a Vitello's live. And I was doing a joke at the time about uh, the coronavirus, And I would say, uh, you know, I've actually got the Corolla virus, <laughs> which is where somebody forces you in a room to listen to Adam Corolla's podcast uh, for hours on end. And it's not a, it's not a horrible joke. It's just, a, you know, it's a Norm Crosby play on words type of thing, but, uh, I guess we were just flippant about it because like every other thing yeah. like this N one, you know, that like SARS and the, what was it? The N one, the bird flu. MERS. Yeah. It, it all seemed like, Oh, it's going to be a crisis. And then it never was. And then, mm-hmm. so I think we all flippantly thought, well, here's another one where China's going to be affected. Maybe Europe will get it, but uh, we're the United States of America. It's not going to happen here. <laughs> and then yeah. slowly, but surely, you know, I guess the experts knew better than jackass comedian Jimmy Pardo did, but <laughs> You know, for once, and, uh, for once, again, for, for for once the experts knew something that I didn't know. <laughs> for once, um, I got a pal named Joe who's a, who's a big fan of you as well. And he texted me this, and I, because I don't know much about the Doobie Brothers, I don't know if it's funny. He texted me and said, "The Doobie Brothers refunds are getting handed out by hand." So, well, I funny? guess his joke is that there's not a lot of people. Is that oh. the, is that the premise behind Joe's piece of business there? <laughs> um, wait, let me tell you something, Joe. They're getting inducted to the Rock Hall of Fame this year, and they're. Uh, they're legends. How dare you, Joe? How dare you? <laughs> um, uh, uh, someone I'm just texted me. <laughs> so, good. Ty, no, no, Tyler just texted me and said, um, the artist was Say La Vie and the song was Bewitched. He, he apologized. He screwed it up in the spreadsheet. And um, I just want, Tyler, I want to forgive you on air. We're, we're in a pandemic right now. So, uh, well, wait, no, that, but that, that's what you said, Curtis. You said the artist was Say La Vie and the song was Bewitched. Did I? Um, I want to say that's what you said because there is a song called "Say La Vie" by uh, uh, by Mink. Is it Mink Deville or Robbie Deville? 
That's a that's a song. So that's why I it was weird to me that you were saying that the artist was say la vie and the song is bewitched. Is that how it is? The correct answer is bewitched is the band. Say oh, you did say it wrong the then. Yeah, you said it wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I just I wanted on record that uh listen, we, we make mistakes here. Um this is for this is for a good cause. And uh but I, I apologize profusely. I don't think any first of all, nobody gives a crap. <laughs> um, <laughs> certainly not me, uh, and certainly not bewitched. <laughs> They're just excited that somebody's talking about them, whether they got it right or wrong. That's right. And and they probably get a little bit of the action on this uh, jukebox. So uh, You know what? You make a great point, right? If, if ASCAP is still keeping track of everything, right now the members of Bewitched are going, hey, somebody's <laughs> listening to us in Jersey. <laughs> I like to think ASCAP is still, still up, even with the virus. They got someone uh, keeping track. I would think so. I mean, right. Sirius XM and radio stations are still going strong. So yeah. uh, I would imagine that the artists are still making a couple of bucks while uh, we're listening to their tunes. <laughs> um, uh, Jimmy, uh, I kept you here half an hour. Um, oh. I, 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 I'm about to wrap up and say thank you. But I mean, does that seem fair? <laughs> yes, that seems very fair, Curtis. <laughs> no, that doesn't seem fair at all. <laughs> all right, fine. I'll keep you around. Uh, no, that. Wonder. I'm glad I could help out in any way, and uh, this this was a heck of a lot of fun. I, I, when you emailed me and told me what the premise was, I thought, uh, to your point, I did hear you mention to Richard earlier that uh, your dad said, you know, why not? Why even play the songs? It's like, y you have to play the songs. Yeah. If you don't play the songs, then you're not doing this. Like, it's, <laughs> uh, I think that's the coolest thing. So I, uh, so I was honored that you asked me. So thank you so much, and hopefully you'll raise a couple of bucks. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we're, 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 we're in the... We're in the we're in the black um, several hundred dollars. Um, That's great. Yeah, and um, uh, Jimmy, I'm, I'm a big fan of yours, and I, I took a risk bringing you on because uh, I I borrow a lot of lines from you. I even said "attaboy," and like it, now it's it's clear to people that uh, you know uh, you've had an influence on me as well. So I, oh yeah, I love seeing you. Well, first before. of all, I, I'm very flattered that you would say that, and uh, take them and run with them. Uh, <laughs> I I would uh, I, I still think I'd do some Richard Lewis stuff in my act and. I, I'm a pretty strong personality myself, so I, I am not insulted by it. I'm I'm flattered. Well, that's great. I, I appreciate your time. It's, it's helping out a great cause, and uh, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm I'm gonna uh, when you're ready to go, you'll have to leave. I'm not gonna end it because once you leave, I'll I'll keep talking about. What okay, we're doing. so I'll say goodbye. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, good luck, and uh, see everybody. Stay safe. Take care. I'm now gonna muck around like I'm Richard Kind, who doesn't know how to use a computer. <laughs> Hang on, here's my email. I can't. Uh, all right, leave meeting. See, see you, Curtis. Nice to be, virtually meet you. Likewise. Take Bye. care. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, the, the Lonely Jukebox uh, continues throughout the night, uh, but no more guests at the moment. Um, uh, you're still welcome to, to send in donations. Um, um, all you got to do is Venmo me $1.20, and uh, I'll play a song on this jukebox inside of this deserted COVID-19 shuttered bar. And um, uh, I will give $2 to charity if you do so. Uh, and if you send in anything extra, it's um, of course gonna go directly to the uh, to the cause as well. And we're helping out um, uh, servers and hosts and kitchen staff who have lost work. Um, I know that uh, it seems like soon stimulus checks are gonna hit and some people have just figured out how to get unemployment or not just figured out, I've been able to get through to unemployment, but they folks need a bridge between unemployment and now. And we also know that unemployment is not, it's a different amount for everybody. So there's some folks who just use cash directly. And that's kind of the goal that we're going with, with this particular fundraiser. Um, boy, thanks to Justine, Richard, and Jimmy for being here. Thanks to, uh, for watching. Uh, for all the people who played some songs, um, Matt, or who requested songs, Lou, uh, JC, uh, Jamie. Uh, I know you requested that we play a song by Chicago and uh, <laughs> we couldn't get to everything, but um, I see you out there. And I think that was a wonderful request for Jimmy. And um, I, I appreciate you, you, you putting a, do a donation in as well. Um, I'm gonna keep the camera rolling, but I'm gonna focus a bit on playing some of these songs as well, even though there's no guests. So, um, uh, Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to turn the camera off and um, get over to Facebook and start, um, you know, put, putting some news out there as well. Um, uh, you can interact uh, with me by sending in requests on Venmo or on Facebook as well. Uh, I'll be over there. Um, 
uh, writing down some of the songs that people selected. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching this. You guys are uh, a blast. Uh, thanks for the jokes you were putting in on the Venmo request as well. Uh,